Lesson 11, part one, personal pronouns in English. A pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. The word that, that it replaces is the antecedent. Sally is a girl, she is a teacher. Susie is Sally's sister, she is a doctor. In these sentences here, the first one, Sally is the antecedent for the pronoun she. We could just as easily have said, Sally is a girl, Sally is a teacher. But that sounds a little funny because we've repeated Sally twice. So instead of repeating Sally the second time, we say she. She is a pronoun and the antecedent is Sally. That means that she means Sally in this particular sentence. But if you notice in the second sentence, Susie is Sally's sister, she is a doctor. She is referring back to Susie here. So in this sentence, she means Susie. Susie is the antecedent for she in this sentence. The thing about pronouns is they change meaning based on what their antecedent is, because they'll, they'll have a different they have the same inherent meaning, like they have the same definition, regardless of what sentence they're in, but what they're actually referring to changes based on what the antecedent is for that particular situation. <coughs> Personal pronouns are pronouns that have either first, second, or third person built into them. For first person in English, we have I, me, my, we, us, and our. For second person, we have thou, thee, and thy, ye, you, you, and your. Now, we don't use the italicized ones in modern English. I'm showing them to you so that if you see them in the King James Version, you'll, you'll know what they are. Um, we'll, we'll get to some more specifics a little bit later, but I'll go ahead and throw this in here now. Thou, thee, and thy are all singular second persons. When there's just one person you're talking to, ye, you, and your are all plural second person when you're talking to a group of people. That's not a distinction we make anymore in English. In English today, we just use you or your. We don't care if it's one person or two, though we can make a distinction. We can say y'all, or we can say you guys, or we can say you ins in some parts of the country. So we can make a distinction if it's really important to us, but normally we don't really care about the distinction. But here are what the old English pronouns are. Third person, he, him, his, she, her, it, its, they, them, and their. Now you'll notice that English only makes a distinction based on gender in the third person singular. We don't have a different I for if it's a girl talking or if it's a guy talking. We don't have a different you for if you're talking to a guy or talking to a girl. Some languages do. Hebrew actually does for second person, for the singular and for the plural, though it's just, they just have one form for the first person. Greek, we're going to find out, is just like English, where first and second person, there's no gender distinction, but third person, there is a gender distinction. And we can see that here in our third person singular, but we don't make a distinct, a, a difference in third person plural. We don't have a di different they for a group of guys or a group of girls. We use the same words. These pronouns also have number built into them. For singular, we have I, me, and my. Those are first person singulars. We have thou, thee, and thy, second person singulars. Or we can use you in modern English. We have he, him, his, she, her, it, and its. Those are all third person singulars. And again, the italicized ones are not used in modern English. For plural, we have we, us, and our, those are first person plurals. Ye, you, and your, those are second person plurals. And they, them, and their, which are third person plurals. In modern English, you and your are singular or plural. And again, that ye is an old English form. In English, we change the form of our pronoun based on what it's doing in the sentence. So we use nominative case pronouns, I, you, he, she, it, we, and they for subjects and for predicate nominatives, just like the nominative case in Greek. We use objective case pronouns, me, you, him, her, it, us, and them for direct objects, indirect objects, and objects of the preposition. This is very similar to the dative and accusative case in Greek 
Though the genitive case in Greek can be used for objects of prepositions, we'll see that we use something different for possession, which is much closer to the genitive in Greek. So the, the idea of objective in English is very close to, indirect, uh, to dative and accusative, direct, indirect objects, objects of prepositions. We use possessive adjectives, not pronouns, but actually technically adjectives, my, your, his, her, our, and their, to show possession with a noun following right after it. We use possessive pronouns, my, yours, his, hers, ours, and theirs. Notice they all end in S, nice little clue, though his shows up in both, so watch out for that one. We use possessive pronouns when we want to substantively show possession. So that's when it's going to show up without a noun after it that it's describing. The possessive adjectives and the possessive pronouns sort of all together encompass the genitive kind of idea in Greek. We just have slightly different words in English if it's going to be used substantively or if it's going to be used as an actual adjective. But in Greek, they don't make that distinction. It would be the same thing. So an example of nominative here would be, I went to the store. It's the subject of the sentence. Objective, he brought it to me. That's a, an object of a preposition or, yeah, object of a preposition. Possessive adjective, this is my book. Here, my is describing book as sort of like an attributive adjective, a regular everyday adjective, so it's a possessive adjective. Whose book? My book. Here's a possessive pronoun. The book is mine. Mine is acting substantively here as a predicate nominative. It's renaming book. Most, almost, almost every time in English that you see a possessive pronoun, um, all of the examples I can possibly think of off the top of my head, they're going to be predicate nominatives, just like this one here. They'll normally come at the end of a sentence all by themselves after a linking verb. Summary. We use nominative case pronouns for subjects and predicate nominatives. We use objective case pronouns for direct objects, indirect objects, and objects of preposition. We use possessive adjectives to show possession with a noun. We use possessive pronouns when we want to substantively show possession. In English, only third person singular pronouns have gender. Know the person, case, and number of English pronouns. And here's a handy chart that you can use to sort of mentally look at all of those. These are all first person pronouns. We have the singulars and the plurals, nominative, objective, possessive adjectives, possessive pronouns. And you can see how all that goes there. The old English forms are in parentheses. And if you want to sort of study that, you can either pause this or you can look down at the bottom of the page um, on, on Canvas there and you should be able to see it just fine.